Hey, hello there, folks. Me, RGB from RJB TV, and this is game number three between Cross and Trisha on fastest map that was played in 2023 in August. I think this is the very first time that these two players met. Uh, Trisha was playing on the name Legend RJB TV, which I did not ask her to do. Just want to clarify that this is not me. This is Trisha, who just made the name for fun, for fun, and played on it without my knowledge. And then we have Burger King One, also known as Cross, a very good fastest map streamer. And I think he's one of the most talented players with the most promising futures in terms of skill development in fastest map. He really has great mechanics. All he's got to do is hone those mechanics in the right direction and support it with the right knowledge and the right flowchart decision making. Because so far what we've seen in this series is that Cross plays well, but there are mistakes that he makes that really work out in favor of Trisha quite drastically. So hold that in his final game where he's on a Protoss in a cross map spawn against Trisha on the Terran here, the Olive Green Terran. I hope that his decision making in this game and perhaps his nervousness don't work out against him. Let's put it like that. Because I'm really seeing sparks of greatness. But the sparks of greatness then get countered by Trisha noticing mistakes that he can exploit and abuse to get himself ahead over Cross. Now Cross there starts off with a Nexus first into a Forge. Very common build order. Honestly, my favorite build order when I play Protoss myself on a corner spawn. On a middle spawn, most players prefer to go for a double gateway into a Nexus, into a Cyber Core, not a Forge, into double gas. And I think that's what he's gonna do right here. He's gonna go for that gateway, then build two cannons in the front, maybe one cannon. It's really a personal preference. With two cannons, you're safer with one cannon. You have some protection, but you can still die to all-in bunker rush with a lot of SVs pulled to kill the cannon. You can still die to that, but it's less common. So double cannon there in the front, then we'll see a double assimilator in the back, and hopefully a cyber core. And the scouting has begun, with Trisha going for a double barracks, not a third one. He's going to go for double barracks command center. Uh, again, this is something you can do when you do not get scouted early, because if you don't get scouted early, you're probably gonna be safe from rushes, because if a protoss wants to rush, they will have to scout pretty early, at least earlier than this. So let's go red versus blue, because green against green on the minimap doesn't feel too great, doesn't feel that well. So what we've got right here right now is marines being sent to the front to prevent this pro from getting into the base, and I think... I think an SCV just walked right into the cannon there. So Trisha knows where Cross is on the map at the moment. He's going for a triple command center. This is something you can do when you know that the enemy Protoss is not rushing you. You can just go for a triple command center, stop marine production for a little while and get a double gas to speed up your gas income really early. You will... It will hurt your economy a little bit because you're putting a lot of the SCVs currently on the minerals onto the gas. Like you pull four off the minerals and put a total of six on the gas. And that does hurt your economy a little bit. That's why you get the triple command center to hopefully catch up on the lost income by about, I'd say four and a half to five minutes. And from that point onwards, your income is gonna skyrocket with the consistent triple command center SCV production. So there's Ella there standing in the front because he can't get in. He starts building a wall in the front. He starts his wall very early. So I think he's going to finish the wall very early and just keep any enemies out of his base. Now Cross went for a fast robotics. This time around all the timings are correct. In the previous game he swapped around the timing of the cyber core and the forge on a double gateway no choke build order. The choke comes much later, but he swapped around the forge and the cyber core, and all the timings were off. Very fast Templar's archive here, though. He might go for Dark Templars here, or he might go straight into Templar Storm. Just go straight for Templar drops on the economy. And um, it's something you can often see when players don't go for a second robotics before their Templar's archive. So support base on the way. He's going to add on gateways now. And I feel he's going to have to add on a second robotic very soon. His shoulder's on the way there, though. When this temple's... Oh, he scanned it. He scanned the most important part of his base, the backside and the technology there. He can see the temple's archive. He's going to go straight for Storm. We do not see another temple in production. He's probably going to go for, I think, 
just the High Templar on a single shuttle. He's building a second shuttle, so Reavers are not in the planning, and there's shuttle speed coming up as well, and the Templar will probably be constructed or warped in after this Zealot finishes. So we got the Marines in the front, just holding position, making sure nothing gets in. Very fast start port there, still always lifting up his barracks very early. Looks like he wants to just completely go for Wraith and Tanks. Very common build order amongst all of very high level players. Uh, getting double engineering bait on the side. He'll have the barracks up on the high ground as well for ex additional vision. Is, um, he, he's gonna have detection after the engineering bay as well. Starport 1 is finished up. He might add on two more or might go for a control tower. Oh yeah, he's gonna go for uh, factory. So this will probably be control tower to go for a dropship. It's got double scan there, so you can keep track of everything that Cross is doing. Cross has double shuttle already. It's gonna go for two more, and Robo number two, they're also on the way. Gateway number four on the way, and he has those Templars ready to start firing as soon as Templar Storm finishes up. So she's getting shield first. I do not like shield first. And the rationale behind shield first is that both shuttle and Templar and Zelda benefit from the shield upgrade. But I think that the armor upgrade is better. Because an armor upgrade does more for keeping your units alive than a, sh than a shield upgrade. Because a shield upgrade takes full damage from every single source of damage. Whereas armor does not take full damage from every single source of damage. For example, when a large unit shoots on a small unit, there's reduced damage. Or when it's explosive or concussive damage, the damage number changes. So I think armor is better than shield. It's something I see 4 of a do a lot. You get shield first, but I think armor is the better one when you're going for shuttle drop focus play. Because when you go for shuttle drop focus play, you do not need the attack upgrade because you're not really planning on using zealots or dragoons to do damage. You're hoping for the reavers or the high templars to hit the SUVs or to hit units all across the base. And with the Reavers, you can of course also hit the turrets or the supply depots or whatever else. But the goal is to hit those SCVs. That is why you see shield, not weapon. He's got Templar energy on the way. Marines see the shuttles there with the vision from the engineering base. Does not take down the correct ones. The Templars are loaded very early, dodging the storms very well. The storms have been used. Cross got very close. I think he should have just tried to storm the SCVs in the back, but he wanted to just go for a certain damage, like damage that is guaranteed, instead of trying to gamble to hit the storm on the SCVs and have the Templar die before it storms. So that was a good choice. He killed a large amount of Marines, but we have a lot of Goliaths and Wraiths already in the base here. So anti-drop is pretty much where it has to be for Trisha. Went for six factories, very fast six factories. You do not often see a combination of Goliath and Wraith defense. It's not something you often see. Oftentimes it's either Wraith Defense or a Goliath Defense. Almost never will you see both of them at the same time. But because he went for the Triple Command Center with a lot of gas, he can afford to spend minerals and gas on both of them. Also Triple Armory already there. He's got level 1 uh, attack and air attack and ground plating all on the way. Whereas Cross now has a total of 7 gateways and double starport there in the back. He's going to go for a second forge. He's got level 1 shield finished up. Going to go level 2 shield. Now, we can determine if he's going to go for carriers or going to stay with a ground army. Based on whether he builds a cyber core next or a forge next. That's going to be the deciding factor. That's going to be the deciding factor. So we've got Dragoon Singularity Charge drop on the way. They're on the top side. Almost on the, on the top corner. Raids dodge the storm. He's focusing on the turrets. I think he should have crawled forward with the High Templar, but he doesn't know that there's almost no... Well, actually, he does know he's got a Corsair there on the high ground. Yeah, Cross, once again, goes for guaranteed damage, decides not to go for the SCVs. But the longer he doesn't go for the SCVs, the greater this game becomes for Trisha. Because the Triple Commander has skyrocketed and boosted his economy forward further ahead than Cross's economy is at the moment. He's got 80 SCVs, he got 68 probes. His worker production has been absolutely superb. Drop on the bottom there, they're ready to go. He's got to come cannons there on the bottom. He's probably going to go for shield batteries there. Got one more target on the way. An observatory is one, two more forges. Two more forges. He's loading on the bottom corner. Going to storm on the Goliaths. He once again cannot go in. Trish's vision has been... Oh, try he's going to maybe go. No High Templar in there. He's trying to trick him into pulling his SVs off the minerals to at least do some economic damage by having him mine, uh, stop mining for a short little while. 
yeah, Trisha's base is looking really good for a 10 minute game so far. And Cross's progression is looking pretty good as well. He's spending very, very well. Look at how he's spending. He's spending rapidly. He went for four forges, which is kind of funny. But it does mean that he's gonna stick to a gateway approach with drops. At this point, I would say go for a five robo. Go for a five robo. So that you can produce a lot more shuttles very consistently and go for rapid fire drops. He's looking to kill the probes. He killed the probe right on the bottom. Probe on the top is still alive because you're protected by cannons. And yeah, he's progressing nicely. Fourth command center supply is very soon going to be maxed out. He's on quite a high amount of SCVs, 90. That's quite a lot. I'd say Cross is on a better amount of workers. He's in 78. He's going to go to 80 though. He's mining from five gas at the moment. That's a pretty good amount of gas. He can go for a total of nine here or add another Nexus for a total of 10. But usually as Protoss, you should be fine with seven or six, even if you plan to go for carriers. He's got a lot of courses that are on the way to take down those raids. He's reducing the vision on the sides for Trisha as well. Tanks to the high ground there. Yeah, Trisha's base looking a little bit like a mess right there, but this is very neat and organized. He has no science facility. Does, what? Yeah, no science facility. So he's kind of stuck on 1 1 upgrades. Oh, wait, there it is. I'm blind. I'm so damn blind. So armor number four and f five? What's with both of these players and making too many forges and armories? So that's going to be a fleet beacon. That's Cybercon number two. So he's going to get weapon and air armor. So he's going to prepare to at least be able to go for something like carriers in the future as well. I would have liked to see him go for more gateways, but in a cross map spawn. Actually, in a cross map spawn, is actually still pretty good to go for gateway units. But he really wants to go for carriers. He does not believe that he can achieve a lot more with the ground units. Because his ground upgrades are lagging behind a little bit. He's on 0 to 0 at the moment. The air is on. Yeah, he's got shield upgrades in a very good spot, but the attack and armor upgrades are lagging behind by a little bit. Going over the bottom. Oh, he's attacking the army at the same time. He adjusts really quickly, but this shuttle is going to go in all the way. Arrives on location. As he's running to safety, Ray's going to snipe down those shuttles before they can unload the high temple. High temple unloads, but gets target fired by the tanks. Great target fire there. Trish is playing with a lot of control. A lot of control and position. He's taking his time to do the things he has to do. But the things he's doing, he's doing them pretty much perfectly so far. Pretty much perfectly so far. A couple more factors on the bottom there, so that's nine, and here we have a total of seven. So 16 of those factories. That's a pretty good amount. Three starports. His base is not optimized to the max, but he has what he needs. You can play a perfectly fine game with 60 factories. That's a lot of factories, to be honest. And yeah, he's going to break through the middle there before the can is finished up, and Cross doesn't have carriers yet. They're on the way, but they're not there yet. And he has to add a couple more gateways. Trisha has kind of played this game without taking damage. And not taking damage on the triple commands in the bolt order has allowed him to grow a strong, big army very quickly. He's got 2 2 on the way, dodging the storms very well. Cross has 101 probes. That's a lot of probes. I see it happen to some of the very good players as well, like Burger Sasu. I've even seen it happen to JH and Lee Baku, where they get way too many probes because they just keep spending the minerals very rapidly on making probes and sometimes it happens it happens to the best players in the world so he's going to take down this little army there in the front the temples are they have energy for a storm so going to kill some of these goliath cells are coming out as well he's a couple more gateways there to keep up with the production from trisha but the real problem here is that he has 101 probes he's buying time for carriers but honestly the carriers are i cannot see the upgrades at the moment I think they still... I think they just got level 1 attack. Level 1 armor almost finished up. Whereas the Goliaths will soon be on 2-2-2 two, 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 and so will the Wraiths. I do think the Wraiths have been killed though. No, they're all the way in the back waiting for drops to be sniped. So a couple tanks on the high ground there. The carriers will take care of that quite easily. But the Goliaths are the real problem. The Goliaths are the real problem for the carriers. He goes in a little bit too early on the tanks on the high ground. Which means that the Interceptors will die... You really should wait before you have, uh, until you have all the interceptors finished before you decide to attack onto this army. Because the Goliaths will kill all interceptors, and your carriers will never be ready for a fight. He's going to try to build a proxy base here really quickly. Some uh, proxy robos, proxy gateway, so he can send out drops from this location. He's going to have to buy himself a lot of time here, but 
In the front there, I lost a pylon. The robots in the front are unpowered, no longer usable. We added on more gateways. Gonna try to attack from the side here. But once again, not enough interceptors to really fight against these Goliaths. As you can see, the interceptors die very quickly, and now they have no more interceptors left to fight with. He's on 1-2-1 one, one upgrades there, though, but 2-2-2 two, two, two there for Trish and Cross dies. Oh, it doesn't really die, he just gives up here. And honestly, it is okay to give up here, because the game is pretty much over, and I think this game Cross played well. I just think that the Cross map situation worked out against him. It really worked out against him, and I think that he should have not gone for the carriers and just stayed with a focus on gateway here. Focus on those ground upgrades, don't get level 1 shield and level 2 shield before you get level 1 armor and level 1 attack. Get level 1 armor, then attack, then shields on a triple forge. Those armor upgrades are much more valuable, much more valuable in my opinion. So the carriers didn't do too much because the intercepts kept, you know, kept getting taken down. This really was just a game where Trisha outclassed Cross. Trisha wasn't doing anything fancy, was going through all the motions as he should have, but his awareness, his reaction time to the drops was pretty much instantly. They entered vision, he instantly responded. Nothing went unnoticed, nothing wasn't responded to. Everything got taken down perfectly. This is pretty much one of the cleanest Terrans I've seen in a long time. Like, it doesn't look clean here in the front, but he played through all the motions perfectly. Perfectly. And it's difficult to play cross-map as a Protoss. It's difficult, because the Terran has more time to prepare themselves. I do think Cross made some suboptimal choices in his um, decision-making. So I want to really quickly have a look at the decisions he made. Because I think that um, we should have focused a little bit more on gateway units. Of course, he also made too many probes that also hurt him quite a bit. And I think the real issue was that he was too late with adding on more robos. So his drop production wasn't as quick as it should have been in a cross map spawn. You really want to rapid fire drop. There was a little bit too much time in between those drops. So he added on his, uh, like he should already have his third and maybe fourth robo here on the way. Already have those two on the way. So that you can really produce shuttles non stop and load them up. Because whenever you make reavers like this, you're not making shuttles, which means that the time in between your shuttle drops increases. So if you have more robos early on, which you can't afford at the moment, he has a lot of gas coming in here, he's got four gas at the moment. You can afford to go for a four robo on four gas. If you got five or six gas, you can go for even five or six robos without it really hurting your tech progression. So he goes in and he had to storm there on the Marines and the Goliaths. That hurt him as well because, as you can see, the triple command center there from Trisha really put him ahead of Cross. That really was one of the big difference makers. The choice to go for gateways is great. He should already be having his a second forge here, because as I said before, shield upgrade, not that awesome. The temporal energy upgrade is great. And he went for scarab damage upgrade, that's a great choice as well. If you go for a scarab damage upgrade though, Again, I think you should be playing on four to five robos. So you can add at least one reaver into each drop without missing shuttle production. So another drop there comes in, flies over the top side. The extended vision there from Trish is really good. We do see dragoons coming in later to push these vision structures away from the side there. So here he goes in. And this is just a great reaction from Trisha. Using his rage to take down the shuttles. I think storming on the race was a slight mistake, but then again, you could argue that the raids would have sniped the Templar if he tried to walk up and storm the SCVs. And I think the focus on the turrets here was good with the Zealots, but probably a better choice to have the Reavers shoot on the Armories instead. If you can slow down the upgrades, you will have an upgrade advantage over the Terran later on. And I think he could have killed both of the armies, if he targeted this one and the scarab would explode, 
right here and damage both of them. So click on this one and the Scarab will explode right here and do damage to both and take them both down. I think that would have been a better choice with the Reavers. But taking this down is good as well if you can use a quick second shuttle drop right after. And he does go for a quick shuttle drop. He goes over the bottom side because the rays are on the top side. So the thing here, this is kind of a mind game kind of thing that I want to explain right here. When you take down the turrets on this top left corner, you make the Terran think that this is currently their weakest spot in their base. So they would naturally want to put some units here until the turrets are rebuilt. So it is a viable choice to try and drop over the bottom side. But Trisha having Goliaths in addition to his raid defense is also covering and protecting the bottom side. Now here's what I think he should have done. I think he should have stacked up his shuttles and cores here right on one of these gases. Because when you're flying in over this bottom side, over the middle of it, it's much easier to snipe the shuttles than when they're all stacked up on the side because these units have to travel a little bit more distance before they can fire on the shuttles. And he could have maybe flown in a little bit deeper in that case and maybe alert right here and maybe have his Templar within range to storm on the SCVs. So here he is once again, much like in the previous game, he is playing a little bit too safe. And it's great to play safe, it's great to go for guaranteed damage. But in this situation, the guaranteed damage choice is not working in his favor. Because yes, he is storming the Goliaths, doing damage to the Goliaths, and reducing the amount of units here to defend against drops. The issue here is that his next drop is not ready yet. It is absolutely amazing to go for guaranteed damage on units that are functioning as anti-drop if the next drop is capable of following up on the prior drop very quickly. So like, as this drop is happening, the next drop could already be flying in. Either from the top side or from the bottom side. So using this drop that are using to kill and distract units to fly in with another one from another direction or from the same direction. I think that's what slowed Cross down here. I think that was a really good choice for him to go for, but he was making Dragoons, not High Templars. If this had been some High Templars and then some Dragoons and then loaded up the High Templars right as this drop was going in, he could have maybe flown in while Trisha was unprepared for the follow-up drop. So yeah, Trisha is overall playing a really solid anti-drop Terran. Almost nothing in the front, everything on the sides and in the back. And that's all because his scans gave him valuable information early on that told him, hey, this is what Cross is doing. Again, scan the front, see if the drop is there, hasn't left yet, it makes him feel safe. This scan confirms for him, at the moment, I have nothing to worry about because I can see a triple robo and I can see triple shuttle and a bunch of units not yet loaded up. He knows that when he scans this, a drop is currently not yet flying out. So that's all small little things that are confirming information for Trisha that he's using against Cross to optimize his own play. He now knows, nothing to worry about, I can focus on other things with my raids. I can take, I can for example do this. I can hunt down probes on the side and stop construction or warping of structures without having to worry about a shuttle suddenly flying over the top side. A lot of small little things that he's using to influence his choices here. That ultimately led to his win. All small little things that all add up to each other to result in Trisha winning the game. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this short little series with Cross. I think I'm going to do a series between these two from 2024 when Cross had more practice and experience with 1v1 against these level of players. Because I'm curious to see how did he do practically a year after this game was played. Did he have the same results or did he take games off of Trisha? Curious to see. I will do them something in the future, but next up will be probably a Brain, Bill, or Burger Sasha series that I've got lying around and I really want to get into because it's exciting. So thanks for watching. I'll be back soon. See you next time.